respect to Boucher Recording for having me. My name is Dr. Lawrence A.D. Williams. I'm the holder of two Alexander Van Humboldt Research Fellowship. I have been working on Jamaican plants for about 28 years. Most of my studies has been done in Germany, where we have isolated a compound from the guinea hen weed called dibenzyl trisulfide. I was born in the parish of St. Elizabeth, Windsor District, a rustic area in Jamaica. I learned a lot from my father. He told me about the folk medicine of the African people, and that's where my love for natural product came from. We went to Spanish Town and, um, and lived in the area called Golden Acres. Three years we spent in Spanish Town, and we moved to Kingston. My mother was the breadwinner for the family, and she get us into schools at, in Kingston, Norman Manley, to be exact. Mr. Edgar was the principal at Calabar at the time, and Mr. Washington was um, vice principal. And Washington and Edgar told my mother that if I perform very well in the areas that I am studying at Norman Manley, they will take me. I did two O levels at Norman Manley, human biology and physics, and I got through with those and then Mr. Edgar and Mr. Washington agreed to give me a slot at Calabar, and I went to Calabar at the fourth form level. At Calabar, I developed a love for academia. Although my, my love for track and all of those areas was very good, I loved track and field, and Calabar was exciting at the time when I went there. They were winning ch the Champ Boys Championship every year. And um, I got caught up in school challenge training. After about three years, I kept in Calabar School Challenge Quiz. My friend, Dr. Edwin Tolloreed, who is now a cardiologist at the Heart Institute, was a very good friend of mine, and he helped train the school challenge team at Calabar. After fourth form, we went to fifth form, and then we did some O levels, and I end up with um, ten O levels with my with the others that I did privately, and then I went to sixth form, where I per pursue geography, economics, chemistry, and biology, and this is what my friend Edwin Tolerida always said. It's the most diverse studies that he has ever come across of a scientist. <laughs> so after sixth form, I went to University of the West Indies to do my Bachelor of Science degree. I completed that in three years in chemistry and zoology. After Bachelor of Science years, Professor Ajay Man Singh came to me and asked me if, he, if I would like to do postgraduate research with him and I said yes. He told me that he wanted me to look at Jamaican plants, looking at their effect on insects and, and cattle ticks. So I, I decided to do that research at the University of the West Indies, focusing on an insect they call the sweet potato weevil the scientific name for that is Silas Formicarus elegantulus, a very beautiful insect. After working on Silas Formicarus, I then work on the cattle tick they call Southern cattle tick, uh, also called Bufilus microplus. It costs us about 65 million United States dollars per year due to infestation from these cattle ticks and the livestock industry in the Caribbean. In my graduate program at the University of the West Indies, I came upon Professor John Lindo, who is, was, was uh, we were doing graduate work together, and we discovered that Jamaican plants were a very important source of nematicidal agent. That is, these plants contain compounds that will kill nematodes. After that, time of research that we spent the graduate program. I then went to the anatomy department to do, to teach histology and neuroanatomy tutorial. 
that was for five years. And then I went to Humboldt Foundation with two fellowships to do postdoctoral work on dibenzyl trisulfide and epingayone, which turned out to be very important at this point in time, potentially looking like a cure for cancer, or diabetes, or arthritis, and hypertension, degenerative diseases. Coming back from Germany, I went to the Scientific Research Council as a consultant, a research consultant, where I work on a hundred Jamaican plants for their antioxidant activity and insecticidal and in vitro anti-inflammatory activity. I developed the bovine serum albumin assay where we can use this assay to replace animals in drug development in the early stages of the anti-inflammatory process. And this has turned out to be a very interesting um, piece of research. The, it is it has been cited over 150 times now since we have published that paper. And this, this research is very important in the sense that there are so many ethical problems with using animals in drug development. And we have pointed out in this paper that we don't need animals at the early stage of the anti-inflammatory drug development stage while we can use bovine serum albumin. After finishing the Scientific Research Council, I went to the University of Technology as an adjunct professor working with Dr. Shelley. Dr. Shelley is the dean of the College of Health Science, and we have been looking at um, a plant they call Semicontract and found it to be a very interesting plant with some interesting biological activity. This research is confidential for at the time being, but Dr. Shelley is very interested in the outcomes of the research so far. And she has been a very supportive person to my research at the University of Technology, Kingston, Jamaica. My area of research is natural products. Why Jamaica natural products? Jamaica natural products considered to be one of the world's greatest endemic plants with outstanding properties in medicine and other area of applications. I have been studying the Jamaica Guinea hen weed for the past 28 years, and out of that came a big breakthrough in terms of cancer research. And this is what we are focusing on at this point in time. We have isolated from this plant a compound called dibenzyl trisulfide. This compound is now going to go into clinical trial in the University of West Indy Hospital for treatment of cancer. We have secure approval from the ethical committee of the University of West Indies Hospital, and we are now sourcing candidates to be treated with this compound to see how well it will work against cancer. We are also going to be looking at arthritis, diabetes, and hypertension as other side branches of the of surrounding cancer in this big program that we are going to be doing at the University of the West Indies Hospital. The program at the hospital will be conducted by Dr. Horace Fletcher, and I will be as the lead scientist behind the Guinea hen weed, we'll be supporting him in this research. The University of West Indies, where I have studied natural product, has done marvelous work on nat Jamaican natural product over the many years that that university has been doing research. And Guinea hen weed has proven to be one of the top work plants that has been worked on in that university. It is also interesting to note that the guinea hen weed compound, the dibenzyl trisulfide, also called DTS, is a compound that has powerful anti-insecticidal activity. It also works on cattle ticks, and it also has antifungal activity and antibacterial activity. So it has a wide spectrum of application in the field of medicine and agriculture. It's also interesting to note that 
DTS stimulate the proliferation of thymic cell. This organ in the human body controls the aging process. And we think that when the thymus, when you reach age 28, the thymus dies off and you become prone to degenerative diseases. The DTS seems to re reactivate the proliferation of thymic cell. And we feel that this molecule could be a source of anti-aging compound or properties. One other plant that we also found to have interest in biological activity in Jamaica is one called Bontia daphnoides. I have not worked only on guinea hen weed, but several other Jamaican plants. Over 300 Jamaican plants we have worked on. And uh, Bontia daphnoides has a compound in it called Epingayone, which is very powerful against sarcoma. This work was done in Germany, and we have found that Epingayone has a very interesting biological effect on, on sarcoma. It is so powerful against sarcoma, far more powerful than the DTS and sarcoma. And this is one reason why we want to explore the epingayone as an alternative to sarcoma, while DTS show its properties against 12 types of cancers and not so very powerful on sarcoma. So we want to develop the epingayone to treat sarcoma and use the DTS for the other types of cancer. What advice would I give to the less privileged? Well, I started out going to Spanish Town Secondary, the Norman Manley Secondary, you now it's a high school, and I went to Calabar and the University of the West Indies. There was a time when I did not go to school. In Portland, where I was with my father and my brother, Denver, who is also a PhD in computer science and mathematics. I was also working the field to get food on the table. And it was my mother who decided that this is not going to work. And she moved us to Kingston. And that was where this thing all started with my mother. And she never gave up. Always working hard and telling us never give up. Work, work, work. Read, read, read. Anywhere we must get the book from, we have to find it. To my mom, Mrs. Eunice Josephine Baker Williams, I sincerely appreciate what you have done for me. And to all the mothers who are working day and night to support their children, continue to do it. It will make this world a better place for all of us to live. To Bautia recording, continue to do the good work. Bautia. <laughs>